when I heard her beautiful voice and the announcer said, Miss Fitzgerald just got the Grammy. I said, oh, I got a call. So I called over to Ella's office and just then Jean, Nor Jean uh, Norman Grands was his name, N-O-R-M-A-N-G-R-A-N-Z. He also had promoted Billy Holiday, Barbara Streisand, oh, oodles and oodles of people. He owned Reprise Records, which later uh, turned into Pablo Records, mm -hmm. which I promoted. Anyway, um, I called Gene Norman from a payphone and said, would Ella Fitzgerald be available on Saturday night, December 26, 1959. He said, Audrey, if you're promoting it, we'll do it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. So, oh, I was thrilled. The great Ella Fitzgerald. And at that point, she was just starting to come out. You know. It's uh, a new artist, huh? Emerging artist. Yeah. I mean, she had played the Chitlin route. She used to sing. Aunt, ain't misbehaving. She even did Old MacDonald had a farm. Mm -hmm. She did a lot of jazz, but she did not do the Rogers and Hart, Cole Porter, uh, Irving Berlin, George Ger George and Ira Gershwin. None of that stuff. And uh, so anyway. She had signed with Jean Norman. I mean, y'all, I get confused. Norman Grand. Norman Grands, who was, I think, the leading impresario and record producer of the uh, 20th century. Hmm. Nobody could surpass him. When he died, he he had encompassed five hundred million dollars, so we're not talking about some little uh, pussyfoot. We're talking about a great man mm -hmm. who also was the close friend of Pablo Picasso. Oh, so that's how we got into Pablo Picasso. Now, yeah, how did you end up having Pablo Picasso paintings, and how did you come about all these things? Oh, well, I mainly things. collect John August Swanson and uh, a, a Gail uh, Jawanska and uh, Salvador Dali because at the time uh, Jean Norman offered me uh, Pablo Picasso's. I could have got one for 10000 but at the time I was just a poor little worker making enough money to live well, but not that big bucks yet. <laughs> so anyway, we did the show of Ella Fitzgerald. I had a file this thick, turned away 500 people on Saturday night, December 25th, 1959. And um, I also heard from the box office that night that December 26th is the worst night in showbiz. Because it's the day after Christmas? Yeah. And I plotted because <laughs> I had sold it out. Wow. So you then were I came back and historical. It, yeah. Then I came back and brought Ella back three times in 1960. Took her to Hawaii, took her to Arizona, took her to the, uh, well in Hawaii it was the Waikiki Shell, in Arizona, Encanto Shell, mm -hmm. Shrine, Pasadena, mm -hmm. uh, Pasadena Civic. Of course the first one 
was done at Santa Monica Civic. So anyway, after that, Ella was so enthralled with my promotion, she couldn't believe that such a young girl could do all of this. Oh, wow. And in my, uh, we're going to do a DVD, and I will have all the anecdotes about how we got close and all that. Okay. Um, but... So we'll reserve that so that we can have something to hear on the DVD. Oh, yeah. And well, we'll reserve that information. Oh, yeah. Well, not only that, but I, I did, I freelanced for her. For how long? From, from 1959 to 1966. Called me all the time to do concert promotion, uh, radio promotion, go to Vegas to promote her album. There wasn't, I, I did so much. And so how did you become uh, her main promoter? Okay, 1966. I'm, uh, my main client was a very wealthy woman on Wilshire Boulevard, that's all I'm going to say, mm -hmm. uh, who wanted to be in the acting field. Her father had built the music center so they weren't poor. I don't want to give her name, no. Right. So I get a call from Ella's office and they say to me, Audrey, Ella's coming in from Europe. We want you to go to New York City and promote her. I said, gee, I have three weeks. Well, uh, if you do a good job, we'll hire you for life. I said, you're kidding. You know, I, I will retain you. You'll get a good salary. And you can take on other business, but Ella will be your main client. Okay. So I went to New York, and will you believe, got out, I decided, what shall I do? I got big globes for all the media. I, I did a promotion with Rand McNally, and I was walking around to all the press rooms with these globes that Ella was coming in from Europe. And, I, and then I happened to uh, meet Holly Knickerbocker, who with the New York Times was the number one society columnist. And I had booked Ella uh, into the UN for UN Day for Ella. Mm. So uh, Holly, I said, uh, gee, this is great. And there were remote radio shows, and Ella, Ella couldn't believe it. I have pictures and more anecdotes than that. And what Holly Knickerbocker said he'd do for me. Audrey, I'll get out telegrams, no email then, to all the UN ambassadors and invite them in to her opening at the Americana Hotel. And oh, what a big night it was. Where was the Americana Hotel? New York's Manhattan. Okay. okay. I was in New York. Okay. So this all happened in New York? Yeah. Okay. So, and Norman Grands and all those guys were in New York too, or they were out Oh, they came for it, yeah. Oh, that's course. fantastic. And Holly Knickerbocker, I'll never forget him, because his family, the Knickerbockers, were the one who bought uh, the island of New York. <laughs> oh, wow. And they were very... The whole island, huh? Yeah, back in the what? That's history, though. Knickerbocker family. So we used his name on all the invitation, not Audrey P. Franklin. And do you know about 20 uh, UN ambassadors came with all their ribbons 
And it was fabulous. Oh. And all their bars and colors. Their statuses and, and their labels. Yeah. And outside were the flags of all the countries and the red carpet and the limousines. Oh boy! And I sat with them and Ella had to introduce all of them that pissed her off. Because <laughs> she had to introduce everybody? Yeah. Well, could she remember everyone's name? Well, she had a list. Oh, okay. So they had it written and down. And everybody stood up. Well, they kept their word when I came back to, to LA. They hired me and uh, paid me every month from 1966 uh, to her demise in 1996. Oh, wow. So that's a long, long time. Yeah. So you and became very close friends. Yeah, now, over the years, and yeah. you formed that well, bond of trust. She was, uh, this all being the DVD. Okay, you don't have to talk much on this. This is going. No, and yeah. Pablo Records and promoting her, uh, like at the Waldorf Astoria. And I'll tell you, it was a lot of work. That's why I look like this now. Oh, you look gorgeous. I'm worn out. Oh, well, that'll wear you I, out, but you yeah. look good. I mean, you look really good, and yeah, what a history. For my age. What know. a history you have I in a background. Four doctors who keep me going. <laughs> I don't want to mention them. Now. Plus, your positive outlook on yeah, life. Yeah, and taking vitamins and the right nutrients. Yeah. And um, so. I was doing, uh, when Ella passed, I started to do shows, uh, judge, uh,